Yeah, Kenny, good to see you, mate. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's some people you want them to put their mask back. No, I'm just joking. No. I'm just joking. <laughs> How are we doing? Are we well? Yeah. It's great to see you this morning. Isn't it nice not to have to wear these things? Uh, you would have received an email from me uh, this week. It is recommended that you wear them. It comes from uh, our government and it comes from our EU headquarters. It's a recommendation. I can't make you wear them, but it's a recommendation. It's also a recommendation uh, that you wear them when you sing. It's a recommendation, so it's totally up to you. All I would suggest is, uh, you know, when you're sitting around with people, keep that little bit of distance still. Just because um, we're, we're allowed to sing and just because masks are optional now, doesn't mean to say COVID's gone away. So we still have to be really wise, okay? The email this week with said that we've got to be wise and we've got to be you know extremely wise with everything that's around but the good news is we're allowed to sing it's good isn't it it's great it's great i'm going to read a psalm in a second as we start and um, just to let you know there's no children's work this morning we will put some on over august um, but this morning because we're having more of a praise time and i got some thoughts i'm going to interject as we go through this morning and then at the end we're allowed tea and coffee and there's even some cakes Fellowship. I'll explain that a little bit later on how we're going to do that because we still got to be a little bit wise with that. Uh, but this morning we've set some chairs up this morning for our children to come along and join in our praise and our worship. There's some big kids around too. Um, so encourage your children to come along. Parents, come and sit with them if you want. There's some seats around the front to do that. There's some little glory rings. Can you just wave them for me? Um, that we spent hours yesterday at making these. Yes, I was involved. Um, please don't let your children take them home. We'll keep them here because they'll disappear really quickly. We'll keep them here and we'll use them for our children in praise and worship. There's some other instruments as well. But we want to encourage our children to be part of our church because church is not just for grown-ups. Um, so we want our children involved and our young people as well. So any of you young people, you teenagers, you 20-somethings, if you want to come out and join in and grab a glory ring, then you're more than welcome. In fact, we'd probably give you a cheer if you joined in, Andrew. And then grab one of these. Just see them. Oh, this will not embarrass you. It just, it just comes so naturally, mate. It comes so naturally. But listen, let me read a psalm. And if you agree with it, um, then, then say something out, okay? Psalm 100 says this Shout for joy. Amen. That, was, that was really bad, wasn't it? Let me, let me try that again. Shout for joy. songs. Amen. Know that the Lord is God and He is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are the people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgivings yes. and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Come on, let's stand.
responsibility. True? And we have to be responsible people with the freedom that's been bought for us. And freedom always comes at a cost. And that sounds strange to say, doesn't it? But the freedom that we have today is bought at a cost of the creative universe that I mentioned earlier. So we have responsibilities in our freedom. And I just want for the next maybe 10 minutes or so is just to bring some, some thoughts again on, on some worship and some praise, some things that might help us uh, this morning. Um, there are some things at the back of the children if they do, there's some coloring in and some stuff to do some things on praise and worship at the back if they want to do that. If you want to sit and listen to me, I will be overjoyed <laughs> um, if you stay there. We need to understand, church, that we were created by Him and for Him. Created by Him and for Him. You are stamped in the image of God. We know that Psalm 139 tells us you are fearfully and wonderfully made in that age of conception. God puts His spiritual DNA, and you understand the Hebrew context there. God puts His spiritual DNA in there so that you will be able to connect with Him as you grow up and you come to understanding to know between right and wrong in that place of making a decision to follow God. So you are equipped, you have everything this morning, every single person in this place this morning and listening online has the ability to connect with God and praise and worship. We have no excuse. Please talk to me. I can see your expressions now, you don't have a mask on. We are equipped to connect with God and praise and worship. Not one of us can say, well, uh, I can't do that, or I'm not sure I can do that, or that's not me. No, that's, that's incorrect. That's, that's wrong teaching that you had that. You have the ability because you're made in the image of God. Colossians talks about Psalm 139 that I talked about, I mentioned a few moments ago, in order to connect with God. There's a question that's been throughout the generations and generations and if you've studied philosophy, if you've studied things in school, you might have come across this. And maybe you've even asked this question yourself. Why am I here? You've done an alpha course. That question is in there as well. Why am I here? What is my purpose? You asked that question before, maybe even before you met God, maybe even in your relationship with God. Why am I really here? What's my purpose and plan? Well, we know that Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that we are, you know, we have God has plans and purposes for us. But maybe before we were Christians in relationship with God, maybe we've asked that question, why am I really here? Why, why am I on this planet? Why has God placed me on earth? Why has God placed me in a city of Peterborough? Well, what's the purpose and plan? Well, I've got an answer to that question. The answer starts and ends with God. That's it. That's really profound, isn't it? Some of you might even want to write that down. That's, that's mind-blowing when you understand that your purpose and your plan starts with God and your purpose and your plan ends with God. You were created to reflect back to Him His matchless glory. That's your purpose in our praise and in our worship this morning. Like I mentioned a few moments ago, the value that we place on God is to express back to Him His matchless glory. To express back to him who he truly, truly is. You see, God's always trying to get your attention. I don't even thought about this. Over the last few evenings, there's been amazing moons. I've never heard anybody else seen them. Yeah. And uh, it's been so hot. I don't know what you do when you go to bed at night. We've got to have our curtains open and our windows open. And then we close them at 4 o'clock because birds just start singing. So this is one of the most annoying things <laughs> that you want to grab a hold of that bird, but then we have to close our curtains and we close our windows because we can't sleep anymore. But over the last few evenings, the way our bedroom is situated, I can lie in my bed and look out, and it's almost like a, a blood moon. Yeah. You know, it's been, been slightly discolored and red, and it's been absolutely gorgeous. I don't know about you, but I'm fascinated with stars and moons because I just think it's incredible that God speaks those things out, and they're hanging there from his spoken word right in creation. And I have difficulty sometimes getting my three kids, three kids' names, and now we have a dog, putting them all in the right order. So you've got to go through all the names to get the right one. And yet God names the stars each by name. 
And I'm just fascinated and it's just incredible and it blows my little Irish mind to think that God spoke and there's this incredible moon out there. And God is still continually trying to get our attention. Who loves the sunset? Where's all the romantics? The sunset. When we lived in Blackpool and I was driving home on evening and God gave me this vision and plan for the church all because of the sunset. And he said to me, the only thing left in Blackpool is this, the things that he had created. Beautiful sunsets, he's getting our attention, the moon, the stars, the clear blue skies. You know, you've looked at over the last couple of weeks, sometimes there's not even a cloud in the sky. Anybody look in wonder? Yes. And think, wow, wow, it's God getting our attention because he made creation. Yeah. Creation always points to the yeah. creator. Always points to the creator. He's continually trying to get our attention. He's always trying to get our attention. I still believe there's more to this life than we've yet experienced. I think there's more for this house than yet we've yet experienced. Three people are with me. There's much more for City Church. There's much more for your life than you've yet experienced. There's more deeper things in the Spirit of God than you've yet got to go to. There's more revelations that you've yet got to hear. Amen. There's more miracles you've got to see. Amen. There's more breakthroughs that you've got to experience so far. Amen. There's so much more in God. So much more that we've yet to experience. And the levels of His presence, there's so much more deepness that we can go into His presence than we've ever experienced together. Mm. You see, two are still stronger than one. And that's just not talking about somebody getting married. In our worship and in our praises we join together. Something happens. The hosts of heaven want to join in because they don't understand salvation. They've never experienced it. There's something yet to happen when we all get together in the presence of God that you and I have not experienced. Yes, yes. Anybody up for that? Yes. That means that your dignity has got to go out the window. Yes. Hello? That means you may be so flat on the prayer on the floor in the presence of God that you may not be able to move. It may mean that you may not be able to open your eyes because you might sense the glory of God right in front of you. You might even hear some angels singing. And I'm not talking about me with a microphone. You might hear some angels singing and stuff. There's still things that we've yet to experience in the presence of God. And it all happens when we join together in worship. Do you know that you are the object of his affection? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody loves you like he does. Yeah. You are the object of his affection. Don't you believe me? Yeah. Verse of scripture we know really well. John 3.16 For God so loved Pop your name in there. For God so loved to fill that he gave. You are the object of his affection. You are. Yes. You've heard me say it before, if you had a fridge, your, your picture would be on there. You pop your picture on there. You know when your kids are, you know, when they're coming through and you know they draw you a picture when they're young at school and they come back and you're trying to get it the right way up and you're trying to look to see what it is and you're trying to guess what it is to make sure you don't offend your child. And so you learn over the years, oh what have you drawn for me? And you get the revelation so you don't stick your food in it. You are the object of his affection. Yet God sent his one and only son to die in your place. Why? Because he did not want to be without you. He thought the worth of crucifying his only son was worth more than him being with you. Wow. That's incredible, isn't it? The thing that God sacrificed his one and only son because he loved you so much because he didn't want to live without you. So he let his own son be killed and crucified so he doesn't have to be without you. That's really hard to comprehend. It's really hard to try and understand. And so, you know, we're going to continue worship in a little while, but are you prepared in this incredible love that he's shown towards us? Are you ready to show him how much you love him? That means we don't care about the people that surround us. 
I have no problem this morning. My wife will probably tell me off. Telling you in front of her, telling my wife in front of all of you how much I love her. We're 25 years married this year. In fact, on Tuesday, and I did remember. You get the silver medal. Yes. No, no. <laughs> I have no problem because she's the love of my life. I have no problem expressing the love that I have for my wife. And the church is us. As the bride of Christ, we should have no issue. We should have no problem. We should not be offended the people that's around us, our carers around us, to tell them how much we love him. Because he had no problem showing his affection towards us. When he said this one and only son, you see, worship's all about Him. Yes. It's not about the songs we sing. They just help us. The songs are there to help us get into that place of, 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 of fixing our eyes on Him, to help us with some words that maybe we can't express if we're not very musical or we're not very good at that. To help us get into that place that we fix our eyes on Jesus, to come into His presence. That's what the help is. They're just they're little avenues or opening doors or whatever way you want to put it to bring us into a place that we come deeper into His presence. I'm still waiting for that song to come through. I exalt Thee. I'm just I know what time Pentecostal I think it's just the songs like that. I don't have to look at the screen with the words. I just want to exalt Him, yeah. and I can sing it all day. I can sing it all day. He's the center of creation. He is above everything else. He's Lord, He's God, He's Father. In fact, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Why, why don't you shout out the name of God that you know? Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, He's God our healer. Daddy. 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 Abba. <laughs> Yeshua. Yeshua. Shalom. God our peace. What else? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Is that it? We got five names of God? Come on, shout them out to me. Don't make me come down because I'm allowed to now. Yes, yes. El Shaddai. Elohim. Elohim. The I Am. What was that one? Champion. Champion. Redeemer. Redeemer. There's hundreds of names of God. We just got to shout them out on our worship. You know when the song finishes? You don't have to. The great I am. The great I am. When the song finishes, you don't have to. The song has to take a break somewhere along the line. The music has to stop somewhere. There has to be a bridge. There has to be a space. You grab a breath and we sing the next, next verse. But when the song finishes, yeah. it's your turn. Amen. You lift your voice. You shout it out. You speak out the names of God. You come boldly into His presence. There's over, I don't know, somebody said there's 365 names of God. There may be more. I have loads of them all on my computer somewhere. Just all the names. It's just incredible to think the God that we love and we serve. You know, there's much more. God is much more worthy to be praised than our one hour a week and the time we meet during the week. God is much more worthy than our one hour of worship that we had this morning. He's much more worthy. But God wants you to know that He's near. We, we touched on this a few weeks ago. That the angels praise Him. Creation praises Him. And His children praise Him. God dwells in endless praise. Do you think heaven is quiet? No. If you've got myriads and myriads of angels, that means you just can't count them. And they're crying... Holy. Okay, let me try this for a second. This side of the room, I want to shout, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Okay? Yes. And then when they stop, it's your turn. Yes. And your job is to outdo them. <laughs> is that all right? Are you yes. ready, guys? Okay. Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Can you, can you do better? I think so. Okay. All right. eternity to eternity that's not them finished then when you're finished 
The angels on this side, so they tell I'll call you an angel, an angel on this side cried, to sing our praise to God. Don't waste the opportunity. If we truly believe in the presence of God, that we've still got to go deeper in the presence of God, then why can't this morning be a deeper place? There won't be another today, right now, right here, in this place. There won't be another one. This is it. You won't get another 19 minutes past 11 on the 24th of July. You won't get another one 2021. This is it. This is it. And when you go home and have your lunch, the time we've had together, it's gone. It's gone into history. It's gone into eternity. We won't have another opportunity. Don't waste your worship. Don't waste the time that we have together. Let me tell you something. The enemy knows exactly the score. <laughs> now that little angel called Lucifer, who was in charge of worship in heaven, he knows exactly the score. He's heard you singing this morning. He's heard you worshiping. In fact, Lucifer has even seen the glory of God. But now he wastes his worship. He chooses not to worship. Why? Because pride stopped him. Don't let pride stop you worshiping God. Good one. I like yeah. that one. Yes, yeah. Good one. <laughs> Don't worry who's beside you. Don't worry if they're singing like an old crow. It doesn't matter. It's the worship. It's the overflow of the heart. It's the hunger and the value that we place on God that we want to put on to display. I want to speak longer. What are we doing for today? You know, every day there's a battle for your worship. Every single day. You see, up to the time that Lucifer decided in his heart that he did not want to worship God anymore, but wanted people to worship him. Up to that day, he was worshiping God. But he decided one day that he did long, no longer wanted to do that and he wanted people to worship him. So again, I ask you the question, if you're not worshiping God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, then who or what are you worshiping? <laughs> wow. yeah. We touched on this um, a couple of weeks back uh, while we were doing some of the leadership training with some of the guys. and. Um, do you remember when Jesus was baptized in water and he came up out of water and then there's a voice from heaven that said, this is my son who am well pleased. And then the dove, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon him. And then you think, oh, what a great time. I'd love a baptismal service like that. Anybody else? I'd love to get done again just to make sure that that happened to me. 
But then something happens. The Holy Spirit, who leads us to Jesus, leads him into the desert. And then he's tempted by Satan himself, Lucifer, who was in charge of the worship in heaven, who had seen the glory of God, who cried, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. But now in his heart, the pride came along and says, no, I don't want to worship Jesus and God anymore. I want people to worship me. The Holy Spirit leads him into the desert. And this Lucifer meets Jesus in the desert and tempts him three times. And three times Jesus replies with scripture. He gives scripture back. But on the third time, Matthew 4.10, he says, Away from me, Satan. He says, For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. God will not allow or does not want the worship that you have to be shared with anyone else. Thank you, Lord. No football team. No other person, not the money in your bank account, not the car that you drive or the house that you live in. God is a jealous God and he wants your worship only to be for him. Of course, we know that Jesus took this from Deuteronomy chapter 6 because he knew the word. Mary and Joseph did a, a really good job. Jesus won the battle against Satan in the desert by the word of God and worship. And, and worship. You see, sometimes, and we've said this over the last, today we've been here three years, three years exactly today, the last Sunday in July that we started three years. Half of that we've been under house arrest, but we've been here three years. And some of the stuff that we've shared over the last three years we need to understand that there's a battle that's going on. And for some of you, as, as Jesus defeated Satan in the desert by the word of God and understanding the worship God and him only, we got to understand, church, that we can't share our worship with another person. And for some of you, in times of difficulty, in times of problems, in times where you think you can't do anything else, some of you guys got to praise a breakthrough. We talk about prayer breakthrough, but we can praise a breakthrough. Sometimes when the enemy comes in, worship the Lord your God and serve him only because when you worship the Lord your God, his presence turns on you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in the presence of God, suddenly my problems don't look so big. True. Suddenly they don't, they don't seem like I, we, I can't cope with them or I can't deal with them because I'm in the presence of God and the one who knows how to deal with all that stuff. Yeah. In the, is that true, Norma, with the testimony you shared earlier? Can I, can I say that? I was talking to Norma. You know Norma's had problems with her eyes over the last um, couple of years, really. Several years, yeah. And um, she'd been to the, the specialist this week and thought they were just going to do some things. She had some blood in the back of her eyes that was clotting up and things. And then uh, she went this week and um, she didn't know they were going to put an injection into her eye. I don't know about you, but that would freak me out. I'd probably leave. <laughs> I nearly did. Nearly did. <laughs> <laughs> And then when, when she was talking, and she went on to share her story, but actually when they tested her eyes, her eyes are actually better now than she went last time. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my God. <laughs> and what did you say to the doctor? I said, I don't think I'm strange, but I believe that God is going to heal me. Amen. He's done it once before. He can do it again. Amen. And he said, the doctor said, no, I believe you. <laughs> and I said, I know that he uses you to heal me as well. Yeah. Um, it, I'm not dismissing yeah. the um, skills that God, and wisdom that God has given us. Yeah, yeah. That would make you worship, wouldn't it? Yes. And it's not you worship because you've got the result that you're after. You worship in faith. Yes. You praise in faith. You praise for your breakthrough. When we're in difficulties and times, we pray. We're not praying, oh God, would you please do it? You've got to pray in faith, believing He's going to do it. Yes. Again, it's back to how big is your God? How much value do you put on Him? He's, is He the God that can answer prayer for somebody else and not you? Then your God is too small. <laughs> your understanding of God is, is too small. It needs to be much bigger. So you've got to battle through and, and use worship and use praise to help you get through your day. 
You see, if worship wasn't so important, why would the enemy try and stop you from worshiping? If prayer wasn't so important, why would he stop you praying? If reading your Bible wasn't so important, why would he stop you trying to read your Bible? Because it's so important. It communicates you with our Heavenly Father. It communicates you with Jesus. It helps you with the Holy Spirit to, to help you worship and to praise and to, to speak in tongues and encourage yourself and get some breakthrough. If it's not so important, why is the enemy trying to stop you doing it? You see, worship is not something you do or something that... Worship, sorry, worship is something that we do, not something we watch. It's practical. Worship is not something you attend. Worship is something that you do. Worship is something that you enter everything with. Every ounce of your being. I read at the start that I enter his gate with depression. Enter, sorry, the what it says? Enter his gates because I've been told to. Enter his gates because my mommy's dead. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with See, the Psalms are full of these words like shout to God, sing a new song, dance before Him, clap your hands, bow down, lift up your heads, tell of His might, stand in awe, meditate on His truth, walk in His ways, uh, still your heart, run to Him, lift up your hands, clash the cymbals. Okay. Praise Him on the musical instruments, see His face, tell the nations. It goes on and on and on and on to speak of the praise and worship the psalmist keep telling us. You see, a song is not enough. Singing is not enough. Anyone can sing. Well, nearly anyone, depends on your side. side. But we live in a world where it's, you know, get rich quick. It's all these singing things that are out there. I want to be the next star and sing. Singing is not enough. The cross demands more than a song. Grace requires that we bring ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Because that's our spiritual act of worship. It's more than a song. It's more than just singing, I exalt thee. It demands more from us than singing the words that's on there. And if you don't know the words on there, and you don't know the tune, sing your own song. We don't care. As long as your heart is connected with Him, and you worship Him, and we can be singing, I exalt thee, and you can be singing, Kumbaya. And it doesn't matter if you're worshiping Him with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Connect with Him. But don't just sing because the words are on a screen. It's making sense. You've got to give God everything. That's your reasonable response. You have to give Him everything. True worship is a whole life response to God's great and His glory. Not just one hour together on a Sunday morning. That's not worship. That might be religion. Hmm. If you're just singing a song, but well, that's not worship. Was it Matt Redmond said when he put down all his music, his guitar, and everything, and he says, I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm going to shut up now. But I want to encourage you to put your hunger on display. Don't be content. Please hear my heart here. Don't be content with good music and good preaching. We must meet God. I can give you sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon. And I can speak to you the following week and you probably can't remember a word that I've said. But you'll never forget me in God. You'll never forget meeting Him. It's about worshiping Him. But we may have to pay the price of 
just putting our hunger on display, not caring about the people that surround us. Tommy Tenney writes in his book, says, maybe brokenness on earth brings openness in heaven. Maybe our brokenness as we come in worship and in praise, and we just put our, our love on display before him, just opens heaven above us. And I wonder if we were all to do that together in one place, I wonder how much of heaven will touch earth. You see, when they're all together in the upper room, they're all together united. They hadn't fallen out. They were together. They were, they were in one voice. They were together and in the Holy Spirit. If there was disunity in that room, do you think God would pour out His Holy Spirit? Put them all together. When we're all together, and we just put our hunger on this place. Something's got to happen. Something of heaven has got to touch earth. There's so much more I wanted to say, but even, you know, in 2 Samuel, when they're bringing the ark back, and this guy called Obadiah takes, takes the ark for three months because David didn't want it because when they were stumbling, somebody put their hand out to stop the ark falling down and then they died because they touched the ark of the presence of God. And David gets really annoyed with God and won't take the ark back with him. So Obadiah takes it and he has it in his, remember Wes Campbell, remember Wes Campbell? He spoke at a sermon on this saying, God in your backyard. And he says, Obadiah had it in his house for three months and God blessed him for three months just because the presence of God lived in his house. What about the presence of God and the glory falling in the place where you live? I'm not talking about just here, in your house, in your living room. Anybody up for that? Yes. Let me finish with this. Don't offer a sacrifice to God that don't cost you anything. The fact that it doesn't really cost you is not a sacrifice. There's one thing that God can't deny. David wrote it in Psalm 51, 51, he says, A contrite heart, broken spirit, yet to deny. We come before him humbly. We come before him with a heart, soul, mind, strength. We come before him the value that we place on him. We come before him not to sing a song, but we come before him to connect my heart with his heart. We come before him to worship. You will meet with God.
Yeah. Amen. Well, listen, um, we're, we're kind of done. Um, they are going to do another song in a second, but we'll let you know there's tea and coffee and some juice available at the back. Um, to help us, just remember to keep about one meter distance if you can. So please feel free to grab a tea and coffee with some biscuits and cakes. I'm bringing you back to your seat with you. And if you want to turn your seat around, um, so you're still one meter distance from the person. If you want to have a chat, then please do that. So come back to your seats. Please feel free to bring your tea and coffee uh, back with you. And then um, we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. Um, but let me just pray as we finish this morning. I want to encourage you to worship this week. And praise this week. And praise and break through and worship. Even when you don't feel like it. It's just because of who he is. Amen. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning and the freedom we had. And uh, Father, we know it carries responsibilities. And Lord, I pray as we gather into this week, Father, you protect us. Keep you safe. Look after us. Lord, we pray that you would be uh, not just people that worship together when we meet on Sunday, but Father, our worship would be like they did, Lord, in the time, 24-7. As Psalm 134 says, they worship even in the night, so we worship at night, just in the house of worship together. And Father, we worship you all the time, like they did all the time. We thank you for the amazing body that you placed on our lives. So, Father, we just want to put that value back to you, Father, in our praise and in our worship. We bless you. Lord, we continue to pray for Pauline. Paul and hopefully she'll be out of hospital tomorrow. And we pray for the complete restoration of her body that every pain and age is just disappear right now in Jesus' name. For others in our fellowship, she was to be praying for God. We just pray and continue to really touch them, heal them, and restore them. And we will see them back again, Father, in this family together, Lord, as we would just praise and worship together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So,